Hi guys, Olivia here, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Today is Friday, February 7th, and it has been two weeks since my last video. Hope you have all been well. Um, if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if you are brand new to my channel, welcome. Over the past two weeks, I did have a bunch of brand new subscribers. And so I wanna say a great big thank you to all of them. A lot of them went back and watched my videos from the very beginning, and I appreciate it so much. You guys are awesome. And thank you for letting me know that you loved it. I, I appreciate that so much. Um, over the past two weeks, it has been um, fairly busy in my world. I had a number of quilts that came in um, and a couple of them had like ASAPs attached to them. And so I have been busy working on those. And I also had a couple of people contact me on Instagram because I wasn't posting as as much and so they wanted to check in and make sure I'm fine. I'm fine. I just, I got busy and um, just didn't have a lot of extra time to go on and, you know, post and, and I, I would think about posting, but then I, you know, the day would go on and I just, I would forget and, and all is well. I just got a little busy running my empire. So um, also over the past two weeks, two of my very good friends decided to make boss tube videos. And I think that's fantastic because I have known both of these ladies for a really, really long time. And so it was really great to see that they had decided to make boss tube videos. Um, I, I mean, I've, I've talked to them, but I've never, um, heard their voice. You know, it's always been over like Instagram or emails or text messages and so I've never actually heard them. And so it was really neat to finally hear their voice and to see and to see them. And uh, so I'm really glad that they decided to make Boss 2 videos. Both of them did fantastic. And I cannot wait for the next ones to come out. Um, the first one was Christy at Crosshatch Quilts. I've known Christy for a really, really long time. And I know I've mentioned her many, 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 many times in my past videos. Uh, we work on a lot of the same projects, um, not just cross-stitching project, but also quilting. We kind of like the same things. And um, she always says we were separated at birth, and I really do feel like we, we probably were, um, just because I feel like if we met in person, we would be the friends that finish each other's sentences because we we literally like all of the same things. It's, it's really fun. And so she started uh, making... Well, she came out with her first video about two weeks ago. And so I know, I mean, she did fantastic in her first video. Uh, you you would not know that that was the first video she had ever made. I mean, she's a natural. So um, I'll make sure to put a link to her channel down below. And the other uh, new, the other friend of mine is Tina and her daughter, Ash. And they are, for the love of the stitches, they came out with their first Floss 2 video as well about two weeks ago. They have two videos out now. And I, I'm i thinking that maybe they're gonna be like a once a week. Um, I don't wanna say for sure, but I know that um, they've, they've had two videos come out in the past two weeks. And so I'm hoping that they will be um, once a week video releasers because I, um, I really enjoyed their video and they're so fun and I've known Tina for a really, really long time also on um, Instagram and you know, text message, emails, all the thing. I've been friends with her for many, many years and so it's been so fun to finally, you know, hear her voice and to, you know, to see her and it's just so fun. And so I will put a link to Tina and Ash's channel. Again, it's for the love of the stitches and I will put a link to Christie's as well because they are two brand new floss tubers that I think you guys would like. So anyway, I'm going to do something a little bit different in this video. Normally I don't announce giveaway winners until the end, but because my giveaway question was, if you had a question for me, I would answer that in the beginning of my in the beginning of my videos, which is what a lot of other YouTubers and floss tubers do in their videos. And so I will also do that as well. And so the giveaway were, was four charts from Rovaris that she sent me to give away in my channel or in my video. You guys have to forgive me a little bit. I'm about 40 minutes behind schedule. Um, my husband left to go run some errands and do some grocery shopping. And I um, ended up getting a phone call 
right as I was getting ready to set up and so I lost about 40 minutes. And so I have that kind of hanging over my head knowing that as the minutes tick by, it's closer and closer to when he will be home. And um, even though he totally would not care if I was doing my video while he was here, I would because I would know that he's in the house and it would just totally throw me off my game. So yeah, I lost 40 critical minutes to my video making. So I'm a little bit flabber, not flabbergasted. I'm a little bit like, ah, he's going to be home. So anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to announce the winners for my last giveaway. And I'm going to answer the question that they asked me to all the other questions that were asked in my last video. I will compile them all and I will just kind of spread them out over my next handful of videos. Um, I will try to keep the questions a little bit short. Um, because I, I don't want the video to get too terribly long. Anyway, so the first winner was for the Daisy chart and that winner is Bob and is it Lisi Desroches? I'm pretty positive. I just totally butchered your guys' name and I apologize. Um, their question was, how long have I been stitching? So I first, um, I'm going to assume it's cross stitching. So I first learned to cross stitch when I was about 11 or 12. My, I had um, pestered my grandma to um, teach me how to cross stitch because she, um, she exclusively did cross stitch during that time. I don't think she was making quilts or if she was, it wasn't anything that I really remember until I got a little bit older. Um, and then I, I had begun pestering her to teach me how to cross stitch and I went over to spend the night and she finally relented and so she had me stitch this chicken and it looks like the lighting is going to be a stinker today again. Um, she said that this took me about two and a half months to stitch. I do remember stitching this, but I don't remember it taking me two and a half months. So after I finished it, it hung on her refrigerator until about a year ago when she gave it to me. So it was probably one of those little um, the little kits that you used to be able to buy at like um, Walmart and Joann's and I know you can still get them um, and I'm assuming that that's where this one came from. Um, after um, I learned how to cross stitch I want to say that I dabbled in it um, through my teenage years and it wasn't until after I got married that I um, took it up again and I stitched for a couple of years and then I lost interest in it because all I knew were dimensions kits and I was kind of bored with them. And if I would have known that the world of cross stitching existed beyond those dimension kits, I never would have left, honestly. So um, the second question was for freedom and the winner is Connie Crozen. Connie Crozen. And I apologize if I've also butchered your name. Um, Connie's question was, um, the best way to learn how to quilt or start quilting if you don't have an, uh, if you do not have a quilt shop near you. So if I had to direct a, um, a new quilter to someone to watch, I would probably send them to the Missouri Star Quilt Company they have tons and tons and tons of great tutorials for beginning quilts. A lot of the quilts that they make are very beginner friendly and she explains every step perfectly as well as you can then go print off the tutorial instructions on their website. So that's, to me, that's probably for personally, I know that, and I think her name is Jenny at Missouri Star Quilt Company. She, for sure, I know has a lot of beginner tutorials and she's a great instructor. So I would probably send them in that direction. Um, question number three was for the farm. And this is, the winner of this is Pat Wright. And her question was, do I stitch on 36 count? And if so, do I use one or two threads? I do stitch on 36 count and it kind of depends. A lot of the time I will use two because I like my stitches to be a little bit poofy, but I have only used one thread in the past 
And as long as it has good coverage, I'm okay. If I can see the linen through the stitches, I will probably switch and do two. So I hope that answers your question. And then number four was for The Beach. And the winner of this is Carolyn121. And her question was, favorite season to stitch for? Uh, so I, I'm pretty positive this will not come as a surprise to anybody, but I like to stitch for autumn, which is also why I picked pumpkin for my name, uh, because I just, I love to stitch for autumn. It's my favorite. It, it brings me so much happiness to stitch for it. I also, um, a lot of, if you had to look at my quilts and count each season, the Halloween and autumn season has a ridiculous amount of quilts. I just really enjoy stitching for that season. So to all of the winners, congratulations. Thank you so much for playing. Um, if you can get a hold of me via my email at pumpkinhollowquilting pumpkin at gmail.com, I will get these in the mail to you next week. I also want to do just a little bit of housekeeping. So the winners from the last video, so it was um, the project bags with the, um, the ABC, the spring and summer and winter ABCs charts. I was a little bit of a slacker. And of the three, two people contacted me and I did get your project bags and charts mailed out to you yesterday and the tracking ETA says Monday. So look for those on Monday in your mailbox. I apologize that I held on to them for so long. It was not my intention. I just got really, really busy. And by the time I would kind of, you know, come in from the dungeon, it was past time to take them to the post office. So they are on their way to you now. Um, the other winner has not contacted me yet. And let me, since I have the piece of paper in front of me, the winner was Tracy R. And that was for the winter project bag and the winter ABCs. I'm going to give Tracy one more or two more weeks to contact me. If I do not hear from her by the time... I get ready to do my next video. I will pull a new winner from that video and I will announce it in my next video. Okay, so I'm going to clear things out of the way and I'm gonna show you something I bought. So as some of you guys might know, I decided that this year I was going to try my best to stitch from my mocking basket of whips. Uh, in my mocking basket of whips, I have some that I have started on and then some that I have begun kidding because my goal is to stitch some of the charts that I have bought in my stash. However, I don't have a lot of linen. And so what I went ahead and purchased over the past two weeks was linen for two projects. The first project was for, or for the, the first piece of linen is for the baker's wife that my husband, Brian, which this is funny. So in my last video, my husband told me that for the very first time in all of my videos, I finally said his name and I didn't just call him my husband. I said, Brian. So my husband, Brian, got me the baker's wife for Christmas and he bought me all of the, um, the called for beads and uh, DMC. Let me hold that up a little bit closer. The lighting in here, the sun decided to come out from behind a cloud, so it got really bright in here all of a sudden. And so, he, anyway, so he bought me this chart, and he, then he bought me all of the Mill Hill beads and the DMC thread. The only thing was he told me that I would need to pick out the linen because um, I had mentioned in one of my videos that I was going to, and he watches my videos, just so you guys know, he, he watches all of my videos. <laughs> anyway, in, some, in one of my videos, I had made some comment about how I was going, that any of my mirabilias, I was gonna stitch them on Picture This Plus linens, cause I, I really like those and yada, yada, yada. I do really like Picture This Plus linens and, and I probably am going to be stitching my mirabilias on Picture This Plus linen. So anyway, he told me to pick out what I wanted. And so I decided to go with a piece of 32 count Mirage by Picture This Plus. I picked it up from 123 Stitch. Let me hold it out. So it's got a lot of great variegation in it and I am very excited. I think that she will look really, really good. I think her dress will look really, really good against, it's kind of like a, 
purpley gray, like a heathery purpley gray type material. And so I think her dress will look really, really good on it. And then the second piece of linen that I bought, um, so in my last video, I had shown um, this chart that I was planning on stitching these last two weeks. I have not started stitching it yet. And so this is Home by Pineberry Lane. The piece of linen, I don't remember the piece of linen that I showed for it, but, or no, I had got the called for linen, which is supposed to be uh, Weeks Dye Works Confederate Gray. But when I brought all of the linen, the linen threads home and I auditioned them with each other, they were, it, the antique lace thread that I had bought for it matched it way too, way too well. I mean, you would not have been able to see it. So I decided to pick up a piece of 32 count ale because I know it will show up on that so much better. The only one I'm not 100% sure of is the, oh, I apologize, I got threads everywhere, is the green color. I'm hoping that the green color will look okay on it. So I plan on starting that very, very soon. I just have to wait till I get one of my projects done so I can rotate it in. Over the past two weeks, my rotation changed a little bit from what I had originally discussed in my last video. I decided to continue on with the Anniversaries of the Heart series. Originally, I was gonna rotate this out for a couple of weeks. This is the second block in the Anniversaries of the Heart series. It is a salve that I am co-hosting with Deborah of Canopy Stitches on Instagram. It's a forever kind of salve, so feel free to join in at any time if you are interested. Um, we started it on January 1st, and my goal is to complete it by December 31st. But honestly, it's a forever kind of sow. So I'm just doing that for my own personal challenge. Um, it is a very large piece. And so I, I think it would be a lot of fun to finish it in the, um, you know, in the 2020. And then that way in January, I can pick a new um, start. So in my last video, I, I had the first block finished and I know that this block gave everybody quite a challenge because the original, so when the chart was printed back in um, 2010, the dye lots looked a lot different than they do now. And so when you would pull the called for threads, it read more as a harvesty block, which is really beautiful. The colors are gorgeous, but on the fabric that I'm using, which is a 35 count sand, it looked exactly like the, um, the linen. So I ended up having to uh, make lots of color changes and it definitely, it definitely was a challenge, but in the end, it's completely worth it. I tried to match my first block with the colors that were on the picture, and I think I got it pretty close. So then I, when I finished, I went ahead and started on the second block, and so this is my progress after two weeks in my rotation. And I'm stitching it with some of the called for Fancy Floss and some of the called for DMC, but so far I haven't had to sub out anything, and I think it looks really good. So hopefully in my next video, I will have more of the house done. And then my queen of freedom. So I have been working on her for, at the end of the month, it'll be one year, but she did take quite a hiatus over the past year. This is a um, whip that I work on on the weekend. So what I do is, is Monday through Friday, I have two whips I rotate with each other. And then on the weekend, I work on a, oh, uh, a long standing whip, you know, something that's been in my mocking basket for a really long time. And so she was one of the ones that had been in my basket for a while. And so I pulled her back out in the late fall and started working on her again. I work on her on Saturdays and Sundays. And this is my progress. So I was able to finish the flag that is on her lap and I am now working on filling in the white that is part of her dress. She is coming along fabulously and I absolutely love her. 
and I'm hoping that at the end of this weekend I will have the white completely filled in and I'm hoping to drop down and begin working on the ruffle that is at the bottom of her dress. Uh, Christy from Crosshatch Quilts is also working on her Queen of Freedom. We refer to them as the twins. And she is now in the beading stage and I, her queen is gorgeous. So gorgeous. And she, so she's um, working on the back stitching, the beading, and she's adding the crinic. And I, her, her Queen of Freedom is beautiful. So beautiful. Um, Queen of Freedom is still very much um, widely available on, you can get it at one, two, three stitch. I've seen it on Etsy. I think I've seen it at the Stitch and Frog. You can probably order it from your local L LNS. Um, I, she gets mixed up with Lady of the Flag and Lady of the Flag is out of print and very, very hard to find, but Queen of Freedom, you can get her everywhere. So if you are interested in stitching her at all, please do because you will love her. She's fabulous. And I cannot wait to have her finished because when she is done, she'll be in this room on that wall right there. So I'm excited. And then I haven't shown this one in a while um, because I haven't been working on it. Um, I think in my, the last two weeks I hadn't worked on it at all. And then in this two weeks, I picked it back up again. This is the Words of Enlightenment uh, by Tempting Tangles. It is a stitch along. It uh, really, it's a mystery stitch along. And so it releases in 16 parts and the final uh, part released yesterday. And I just started 11, I think. I think it's 11. I either just started 11 or I started 12. And so this is my progress so far. I'm stitching with all of the called for DMC. Um, they just announced on their Facebook page that they are going to be doing another stitch along. It starts on March 15th. It'll also release in 16 parts. I believe the stitch count of each part is 45 by 45. Um, you pay a one-time fee of $6.50. And then um, the way that they do it is they have a Facebook group and you join the Facebook group and then that's where they release the parts and you can just print them from there. If you don't have a Facebook, I know that I've read that they will they can email you the, the part as it releases. Um, it's a lot of fun. You just pay the $6.50 to join and then you get all 16 parts. I'm kind of considering doing it because Recently, when we fell down the, the familysearch.org um, rabbit hole, my husband discovered that he is related to Robert, of the, Robert the Bruce, um, the King of Scotland, and that he has a lot of uh, Scottish ancestors as well as Welsh and Viking. And so I'm kind of thinking about maybe doing it because the theme of the sal is Scotland. It's part of one of their... Um, travel pieces that, that they do. They've done France, Holland, England, and one other. And then they're, they're doing Scotland. And so I'm kind of deciding maybe to do it just because, you know, he found out that he's related to royalty. So that's kind of fun. Um, he's been doing some research and he discovered that uh, one of Robert the Bruce's castles is up for sale. And so he told me I could buy it for him. So uh, no, <laughs> but it'd be fun. There was a really cute, it comes fully furnished and had a really cute plaid chair that looked like it'd be a really nice stitching chair. So um, anyway, so I'm, I'm tempted. I will put a link below to their website if you are interested in learning more about that stitch along. Um, it look, I, they're a lot of fun. It's a mystery stitch along, so you don't, you don't know um, what it looks like when it's finished. And so it's kind of fun and they're not very big. I mean, I think the one that I'm working on is 60, is 50. I can't remember. It's like 50 or 60 stitches. I don't remember. They're, they don't take very long. I mean, if you sat down, you could definitely like, you know, stitch it in an evening or maybe two. Usually it takes me a couple of mornings to stitch one because uh, I only work on it for about a half an hour. So, but they're a lot of fun. I'll put a link to their website down below if you're interested in joining that stitch along. Um, the next thing is I started Brian's stocking, my husband Brian, his stocking. 
Uh, his is Victorian Father Christmas. I, for Christmas, gifted him, um, it kitted up because, you know, we've been married for over 20 years now. And every year for 20 years, I keep telling him that I'm going to make him a stocking and I still haven't done it. And this year I decided I'm going to go ahead and do it. This is my progress. And I really hope that I don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to get too, no, nope, I'm not going to be able to get too close to the camera because it is glaring really bad. Hopefully you can see it. So this is the, the top band of the stocking. His name um, will go up here. And then there is a dove down in here. Um, the dove has been a huge pain in the bootay. I've had to rich, I, I've had to rip the dove, the dove out three times. And so this is the third attempt. So far it's going very well. I know that there is one small mistake in it, but I'm leaving it. I just have to add the beak and the feet. And I, and then there's like one other stitch up in here that I've got to add and then the, the dove will be done. And then I'm just going to do all the back stitching. It's been really a challenge sticking, <laughs> stitching white on white. And I think that is, has been some of my problem. I was supposed to mix the, the called for DMC with glisten gloss. And that also was a lot of my problem. And I decided to not use the glisten gloss. It's kind of, it just, it's supposed to add like a sparkly hue to it. And I, I really just had a pain and I, it was hard. It was hard to stitch it. I couldn't see where I was stitching. It blended in with the white and I ripped it out and I've just decided no glisten gloss. So hopefully in my next video, I will have it all backstitched so you can see the dove a little bit better and that maybe the sun won't decide to come out and shine so brightly. So but that is my progress so far on that. And then the other little bit of progress I had, which I know this is gonna glare really, really bad. I should have taken it out, but this is my um, Once Upon a Fairy Tale by Heaven and Earth Designs. Amy Stewart is the designer. This is the one that my fairy floss mother gifted me all of the DMC, and I did start it last Friday. And let me, so the piece is huge. So that is the little tiny bit that I got done. Uh, believe it or not, it looks like five stitches on camera, but that's 200. 200 stitches that I that I got done. And there they are. And I really wish it was not so bright. Uh, what I will do is at the end, I will make sure I have a picture of this so that you can see my progress a little bit better. But that is 200 stitches, believe it or not. I do have a magnifying glass now because I was really having a hard time seeing the stitches. It is stitched one over one on 25 count Lugana. And I definitely, yeah. So I bought a magnifying glass and I will, um, I will use that today uh, and hope that it goes a little bit easier. I. Yeah, I, it was not easy to see. I mean, I, I was thinking, oh, 25 count one over one would be really easy. And in the beginning it was until you had to go in and kind of fill in more of the squares because it's blue. It's like a, a dark blue and then there's like a little bit of a light blue and then there's another color of blue that's just a little bit lighter than the dark. And so it was, it was a little bit of a struggle to see. So I'm hoping that the magnifying glass will help me this is my 10 year project. And so I hope that I will be able to get it done in 10 years, but I don't know because there's seven, over 700,000 stitches and I've done 200. So <laughs> it's gonna take me a while. Um, I also realized I forgot to mention that my um, Brian stocking, I'm stitching it on 28 count white Lugana. I realized in the last couple of videos when I show what I'm working on, there's always like one or two that I always forget to say what I am stitching it on, like the count, and so I apologize. I always make sure down below to put in the description box, I will list 
what I'm stitching, what I'm stitching it on and what I'm stitching it with. So just in case you're, if I forget and you're curious, you can always check the description box and I, I'll have it listed down there. So the last little bit of my rotation, and I actually, I took this out of my rotation um, two weeks ago, and that is the Baby It's Cold Outside by Heartstring Samplery. Um, I, this is where I stopped. Um, the reason why I stopped was because um, I had received news that Leanne from Lost and Floss had passed away. Jen Lee, Quirks and Stitches, and Julie, Gulf Coast Stitchers, decided to, um, um, it's still the same sow, but they um, were encouraging everyone who would like to stitch, a, to stitch the chart to stitch it in memory of Leanne. And I know that um, Julie had some of the Baby It's Cold Outside charts in her shop. Um, and there's a, other retailers that um, had stocked it in their shop for those that wanted to join in on the sow and stitch a Baby It's Cold Outside in memory of Leanne. And so I decided to hold off on finishing mine so I can join in and stitch it with everyone else. If you are interested in participating in that stitch along in memory of Leanne, I'm pretty positive they are going to use the hashtag that uh, Barb and Leanne used for the sow, which was baby it's cold SAL. Um, and that starts on February 14th. In the last couple of videos, I've had a lot of comments about showing my quilts in my videos. Uh, right now, I don't really have any to show um, except for a couple of small ones that I don't think that I showed last year. Um, I do decorate seasonally. And so some of the quilts I, I'm, I think I showed in my last video or in my um, last year's video, I think at some point, I don't remember if I showed any of the winter ones, but I know that by the time I make my next video, I'm going to swap out the winter quilts for the spring quilts. And so I will show those. There's not very many of them. So I'll show them in my next video. But I don't think that I'm sh I've shown this one. And so this one was just a, a little mini quilt that I made year before last. It was paper pieced. I think it's the four inch kaleidoscope pattern. And I just used scraps out of my um, scrap bin. Some of these scraps are on my long time gone or from my long time gone quilt, which is now hanging out in the living room. And it was fun. It took, I think I worked on it over a couple of weeks, just whenever I had spare time because it is paper pieced. And so it does take a little bit longer to um, sew together. And then the second quilt is this one, just another little mini quilt that I worked on a couple of years ago. Well, it's probably been a little bit more than a couple of years ago, maybe five or six. It was paper pieced as well. I don't remember the name of the pattern and, and I think that not too long after I made it, I don't think the pattern was available anymore. So they were just two fun little ones. I thought I would just grab them really quick. I do get some questions about the one that is hanging above my shoulder. Um, I've changed it out for Valentine, Valentine's and the patterns available in, um, I think they're called Calendar Quilts by Kim Schneider. I think there's 12 of them. I think if you just do a Google search of like calendar quilts or mini calendar quilts, you might be able to still um, find the book. My grandma and I um, did it together and so hers looks exactly like mine and it was a lot of fun. So before I go, I'm going to show you a couple of project bags that as of right now are not in my shop, but they will be later on today. And so that is this one. And I finished all these last night. Most of them, I think all of them are pretty much like springy. There's this one. And this one. I know I've had this same fabric in blue and um, pink and purple, I think. 
in my shop over the last couple weeks. And then this one, which I really like this one. So all of those will be available in my shop very shortly. And I will put a link to my shop down below if you are interested. Other than that, I think that brings me to the end of my video. Um, I feel like it was not necessarily a hot mess, but I, I do, I don't know. I feel like I'm a little bit off my game today. Um, I actually plan, like as far as like ironing and, and getting everything ready, that stuff was like, and I think it was just that phone call that I got that I probably should have just put it to my voicemail and then, you know, got it later. But it was one of the ones for the quilts that needs to go back ASAP. It's for a lady who um, got an unfortunate cancer diagnosis. And so they are, it needs to go back to her as she begins um, her, her chemotherapy and all of that. So anyway, um, but yeah, I feel like that little bit just sort of derailed me a little bit. Um, I'm going to continue on with my rotation over the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm going to work on Brian stocking. I'll continue on with the Valentine Rose for the stitch along. And I hope, I really hope that I mentioned that it's a Salem co-hosting with Deborah. Um, and then I also will continue with uh, Queen of Freedom tomorrow and on Sunday, and I will work on my Once Upon a Fairy Tale. I had a lot of people ask me if I had started it, and I did. Um, it's going to take me a really, 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 really long time to stitch it. My husband thinks I'm crazy pants. <laughs> He's like, you're never going to get that done. And I'm like, challenge accepted. I'm hoping that the magnification will... Um, Will help me a lot because it, I was really struggling um, and I think what had happened was is the prior to that I'm gonna sneeze <coughs> sorry I'm not gonna edit that out. <laughs> um, prior to um, starting to work on it I had deodorized the carpet and uh, I went out and I quilted and then my husband vacuumed and the scent of the deodorizer I think got to me a little bit and I ended up having a really bad headache and I probably should have postponed starting it, but I was like, no, I promised I was gonna start this on Friday. And so it was um, it was a little bit of a struggle to stitch on it. And so to, I'm gonna give it another try tonight and I'm gonna try it with the magnifier. And I'm hoping that it will work so much better. Otherwise I'm probably gonna have to buy cheaters, which I, I know when I went to the um, eye doctor, normally I wear glasses. But if I tried to put my glasses on and do the video, it would just be two glowing eyeballs um, because of the reflection. And so um, I know that I went, when I went to the eye doctor, he told me that I have about a year before I'm gonna have to have bifocals. So it's just me delaying the inevitable. And I've already decided I'm just gonna get, I'm gonna get contact lenses and then that way I can get some of those cute readers that I can perch on the edge of my nose with like rhinestones in them. So always a plan, always a plan. Anyway, so I'm pretty positive that is all I have to show and talk about in my video. I, um, I hope that you guys will have a great couple of weeks. Thank you to everybody who watched my last video who subscribed. I really appreciate it so, so much. I don't have a giveaway for this video um, and I do apologize. Although somebody said, don't apologize if you don't have a giveaway. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to apologize. <laughs> How's that? Um, I, there just wasn't enough time to, um, cause I have a project bag that I'm going to give away and I'll give it away in my next video because I did hit 4,000 subscribers. So I feel like that needs to be celebrated. So in my next video, I will have a giveaway to celebrate that. And I do, I appreciate everyone so, so much for, you know, watching and subscribing and liking. It's just, it's, there's so much floss tube to be watched. And I appreciate that you guys come every other week to see what I'm up to. And it's so wonderful. And thank you so, so much. I will be back in two weeks to show you what I have been working on. So happy Valentine's Day. Um, you can always follow me on Instagram at Pumpkin Hollow Quilts or my Facebook page, Pumpkin Hollow Quilting, to see what I'm up to. Um, anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and go, and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.